Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back again. So in today's video, a lot of you guys were telling me to react to Goji Center's new video, which is called Maka versus the Queen Muto. This is another one of those battle face-off in-depth analysis. So with that being said, guys, let's go ahead and check this out. My money's on Mothra, easily. Mothra's the shit, y'all. ...who has seen death, blood, but most importantly, earned one of the highest status symbols within the species, only awarded to the veteran specimens. This is no ordinary Muto. This is the Queen Muto. Or Barb. ...go down to the hard facts and analyze their strengths and weaknesses. I can't wait to see this. So sit back and get ready to witness this channel's first all- yeah, female fight. It's gonna be crazy. All right, let's see. These monsters and simulate an accurate fight. We first need to understand their corporal builds and the first battle attributes. Resistance. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I don't really know too much about Queen Muto or how different it is, but. Hey. For this battle, we will not be using the larval form. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I love what they do at Mothra and King of the Monsters. I really hope she does come back. Woo! Yeah, I'm telling you, that's just a trip to me. Like, damn! I think that's still longer than Rodan's. Uh, all right. Strengthening its body. But how big were these? We know that female Mutos measure approximately 300 feet in height. Yeah, there yeah. There's no official mention that Queen Mutos are considerably larger than the standard female specimens. Oh, I didn't know that. It will account for the spiked formations along its back, suddenly increasing its overall height to around 310 feet. Oh, ha! This is an extra 10. Is better built to fight, taking into account that there is a stark difference in the amount of mass that these creatures bring to this battle. The Queen Muto is seemingly built to be able to withstand more damage from its opponent. For this reason, in this round, the edge for resistance and corporal build will go to the Queen Muto. Shut up. Okay. Alright, Mothra. Come on, baby. You better win. I'm not gonna lie, Mothra kind of got her ass beat around by Rotan. <laughs> Alright. Monsterverse lore, it is explained that Mothra has a particular ability that singles it out from all other titans. Reincarnation. Yeah. A lot of people keep thinking she's not going to come back, though. I know she will. After death. But this doesn't end here. After Mothra resurrects, it will still hold the memories of the previous Mothra incarnations. Yeah. That's what I think is really cool about that, too. Every single Mothra in existence mm -hmm. is now housed inside this current specimen. Yeah. This is possible due I wish I could do that, like, damn. We're going out to fight other kaiju. If it dies, then the next Mothra will match. <laughs> going back in time, we see that Mothra has faced an array of titans before, including yep. Nora and even the Kong species. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, she was part of this. Of years will be used against its opponents. But how does the Muto compare? Let's make yeah, how, how does it compare to awesome-ass Mothra? Oh, okay. I wonder if it's like any powerful than the um, Muto Prime, if anything. That's uh, so painful to look at. <laughs> you got jumped. Okay, equal. Okay. Hmm, all right, all right. Not bad. Locomotion. Local, local motion, we will take into account how fast and how 
fragile their movements are. Oh, all right. Godzilla, King of the Monsters. We see Mothra moving at very high speeds when she joined the fight against Ghidorah and Rodan. Her preferred method of locomotion is obviously flight. In 2019, Mothra joined the fight while airborne, rapidly flying past Ghidorah mm -hmm. while avoiding any terrestrial melee combat. We can assume that Mothra will use this same methodology against Queen Muto, as it would not make any sense for Mothra and Muto to engage in an exclusively terrestrial encounter. Huh. The Queen Muto, on the other hand, or all female Mutos for that matter, are limited to ground locomotion, even though they are technically capable yeah, of... Yeah, that's the only downfall. They can't do shit in the air. <laughs> <laughs> move on both the X and Y axes. In this battle, this attribute will be something Mothra will have to exploit to avoid getting killed. All right. Or Mothra takes the edge when it comes okay, to the one. Okay, 2 to 1. 2 to 1. Overall strength. In this particular face-off, strength will be the attribute to determine which of these titans can kill the other and how fast. Let's go back to the corporal comparison. We see here that in terms of body composition, the Queen Muto far outweighs Mothra in both external and internal aspects. Yeah. <laughs> musculature and armor. In King of the Monsters, we witness Mothra... I wonder if that stinger can do anything to it, too. ...against other tall structures. After further observation, Mothra really never displayed any signs of physical pushback against Rodan. Yeah, see? Yeah, because Ro Rodan had her ass pinned. He really did. Oh shit! I think I, I think I reacted to that. If not, I feel bad. Oh no! Alright, two to two. I'm getting nervous. My mind is still on Mothra. Mothra better win. Yeah. I love that scene. She didn't even kill them either, which I thought was pretty cool. She just got them put in their place. True. Mm -hmm. How strong is it? Silk is a natural fiber made out of special proteins which are produced inside certain insects such as silkworms. Man, and I want to become Spider-Man now. No, silk is one of the strongest and most resistant materials in the world. According to some studies, it has been revealed that silk is proportionally five times stronger than steel. You're Damn, right? what? Five. Get the fuck out of here. No fucking way. What? What? Wow, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Intervened here, Ghidorah would have had a much harder time getting free. Mothra's abilities do not end here. These wings have the capability yeah, but don't stop to there. To the natural phenomenon known as bioluminescence. Yes. These can glow in different color schemes, but the most powerful and damaging would be its god ray ability. Woo, yep. Light that is Blind the shit out of them. It's gonna hurt my eyes. Just looking at this. Uh, this reminds me of Call of Duty Loki. I'm not gonna lie. EMP. Two, I believe. Alright, uh, this is this is it, I think.
have been seen to make lethal impacts to an opponent, and in the Muto's case... Uh, yeah. Ooh, especially there? Yeah. That was really painful for Godzilla. Yep. By measuring the size of both of these weapons, we see that the Queen Muto not only has the bigger weapons, but also has the greater range. Meaning Ooh, that each boy. impact will come packed with enough centrifugal force to possibly even impale Mothra with a single strike. <laughs> that, that would really suck. Yeah, 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 there we go, Stinger. In this Titan's rear abdomen. Fully exposed, this Stinger seemingly has the capability to pierce deep. As it was Dude. shown in King of the Monsters to effortlessly impale Rodan's chest. And Rodan, he said, oh, no, oh, oh, oh. mentioned that this Stinger can inject any venomous agents. Oh, Rodan. didn't, this thing is long enough to reach some of Muto's vital organs. That's if the Muto lets Mothra get close enough. But is this Stinger enough to win the edge? The answer is found in these weapons' effectiveness. While Mothra can arguably inflict damaging blows to the Muto, it's only fair to acknowledge that a single impact of one of these massive Muto claws is more than enough to one-shot a small titan like Mothra. Whereas it will take more effort to use and deploy these weapons effectively against a much larger opponent. For this reason, the Queen Muto takes Damn it. when it comes to... This might be a tie, low-key. Let's see. X-Factor. Earlier in this video, oh. we discussed how Mothra lays eggs prior to going out and putting herself at risk and possibly dying. This makes it possible for her to come back to life. Yeah, right here. Obvious memories and experience, but this has an additional effect to her fight methodology. It was mentioned by official sources that because Mothra is able to reincarnate, she has over time lost her fear of death. Ha! See, that's what I'm saying. I wish I could just do that. I'd be like, okay, shoot me, and then I'll come back tomorrow. Like, and apparently, the male and the female Muto were siblings in this film. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> Yeah. It sounds like a tie. Wait. Both of these titans are equal in the critical attribute of battle experience. Please let it be Mothra. It better be Mothra or tie. Ah, let's go. All right. That's what I thought. <laughs> Oh, okay. In close range, Mothra would not stand a chance against the Queen Muto. Pretty much, yes. It would only take one blow to take down the <laughs> So, how did it win? It does not take a genius to realize I mean, Mothra's not stupid either. Get you killed. Mothra's approach to this battle would be obvious. Keep your distance and wait for the right moment. To exactly, yeah. So That's some Spider-Man so shit too. The tools to allow her to get up close and strike a lethal blow. Yeah. Yep. At a safe distance, allowing Mothra to be able to get close enough to repeatedly... That's kind of how I imagine this. She just blinds and then soaks the, the Muto and then puts a stinger on it. Maybe, yeah. Mothra would now find an opening on Muto's only vulnerable spot. It's nice, flat, exposed head. <laughs> a little flat old head. ...to grapple onto this giant beast that will now place itself in a perfect position to insert its stinger close to its brain or brain stem, paralyzing... Woo! scenario would involve Mothra haphazardly getting too close to the Queen Muto and getting one-shotted by those massive claws. But realistically, Mothra wouldn't be stupid enough to let that happen. See? That's what I just said! Yeah, she's not that stupid. ...are capable of killing each other, but the title of Queen isn't just earned by strength. It's earned by knowing how to use it. What do you yeah. think the battle between Queen Mothra and Queen Muto would look like? Do you agree with this? Analysis? I think it would be... You know I feel like it's going to be like a short fight, in a way. Might be short. Love and destroy your whole house and your neighborhood? <laughs> just kidding, but seriously, you should subscribe. See you in the next video. All right. Before
before I even watched the video, so like when I read the title, I was like, okay, Mothra has to win this because like, yeah, I just visualized her just easily blinding the Queen Muto and then just possibly silking up the Muto and then just stabbing it in the head and then bam, it's over. But then yeah, just thinking about the Queen Muto, I was thinking, okay, well, Let's see, if Mothra did get hit by the Queen Muto, then yeah, I'm pretty sure she might be done at this point. But now I'm just happy that she won though. Or if anything, I really thought that this video was gonna be a tie, but no, Mothra wins. So that's all I needed to know for today. Make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to Goji Center's channel in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you guys are new to this channel, please press the button and turn that bell. And I will see you guys the next time. Peace.